What's going on, ladies and gents? Hope this video finds you well wherever you are in the world today. Back again with another organized rant. And today's rant is going to be awkward rant. Um, not necessarily for you, but for me, just because of the topic. Today, I want to talk about sex. Today, I want to talk about sex and the dating culture today. Today, I want to talk about casual sex. I want to talk about situationship sex. I want to talk about um, no ring on your finger, no commitment, no till death do us part sex. And especially as a man, it's just very awkward to talk about because, you know, the perspective oftentimes as men, especially online, it's about how to get it. How many women can you sleep with? And I'm, I'm on the opposing side of that now. Again, haven't been on the other side, but before I get started, I just want to say, take me with a grain of salt. Um, I'm no expert. I'm just sharing my perspective, and I just want to encourage you all to come to your own conclusion. This is just my conclusion. This is me sharing my views publicly in the hopes that um, younger versions of myself, you know, who are going through life and trying to trying to do things differently, I hope that they can can gain wisdom from what you know I'm gonna talk about today. But what prompted this is last week, Tony and I. Uh, louder than words show if you haven't seen the last episode please go watch it but we we're talking about abstinence and the question is abstinence is it is it worth it and you know i love having these conversations with with married men and um men in general just like talking about sex in a healthy way because oftentimes when men get together and we do talk about sex it's about bragging about how many women we slept with you know how early or soon you know you lost their, your virginity and as I talk to more men about it and I learn their story and I ask about, you know, their journey for those that we can get very intimate and, and, and deep about the, the topic, I realized that a lot of us, especially as young boys, like we have a traumatic experience when we when we we lose our virginity, right? We we really a lot of us don't really feel comfortable or happy about it. Many of us go through awkward situations when we lose our virginity and we don't have an outlet, we don't know who to talk to because for most of us. We're too afraid to talk to our the adults around us, our parents, or we don't have a healthy parent to talk to, right? I, I know I talked to some guys and like, let me take a step back. And the reason this is important to, to mention this and reference this is because when it comes to women and we talk about this topic and we talk about women that are promiscuous or maybe, you know, um, being a little bit of a hoe, right? We like to give women the past of like, you know, they had a rough upbringing or they were touched as a, as a, as a child. And that is very true. Right. And that is, a, that is, uh, that is very much the reason for a lot of, a lot of, uh, mishaps when it, when it, it comes to our sex life, sex life and patterns, but we got to have that same grace when, it, when we talking to men and boys and trying to understand the root of this. Right. A lot of boys, most boys that I've talked to that have opened up to me and shared their personal experience, especially like the macho bravado guys who like hard and, and, you know, love bragging about how many women they slept with. I guarantee if you ask them how they lost their virginity and they were really honest with you, for most of them, it was probably a traumatic experience, right? Like a lot of, a lot of people, both male and female at an early age have had early, too, too early um, access to sexual things, whether it's, it's, it's magazines, movies, DVDs, um, being touched as, as a child, right? It goes both ways. And I, and I just want my audience to, to understand that whenever we're trying to, again, just as a man talking from the perspective of a man, cause I don't think women really understand how powerful sex is for men and how the way our chemical makeup within our body, how often men think about sex. And when we look at the animal kingdom, I have a dog. And so when I go to the dog park, I pay attention to the dogs and a game that the dogs play whenever a dog comes in the dog park and he hasn't been fixed and he's still intact and has his cojones, right? Um, it's a game of alpha. So the dogs go and try and hump each other out of dominance, right? To see who's the big dog here, who's the dominant thing here, right? And and it's a, it's a it's like it's a conquering mechanism, right? And so same thing with little boys when when we lose our virginity at a very early age and we don't have anybody safe to talk to to be able to give us spiritual guidance about it. I've said this before, there's a there's there's a dog in every man and there's God in every man. The dog has to be trained and God has to be unleashed. Right now I'm talking about the, about the, the dog when we're not spiritually grounded and we give over to our 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 animal nature, we become just like dogs, right? When we lose our virginity, 
we go buck wild and we constantly crave this thing, right? Like, or even before we lose our virginity, let's say, you know, just through masturbation, jacking off, like there's a lot of boys that get addicted to that, right? They get addicted to that pleasure. Um, and then, you know, as you talk about it, you're afraid to talk about it to other adults. And then, so when you go talk to your peers about it, they pat you on the back about, man, how many girls you don't slept with and just you learning and you're, you're being congratulated for your ignorance and making a stupid choice and, 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 and decision, right? You're just not aware. You're not aware of how it affects you. You don't understand. You like, I think many of us, you know, going through the school system, we learned that like, this is the way that you have a baby and this is how you can catch an STD. But we know that, but we don't really have an understanding of it. I think a lot of it just it becomes because it's a taboo topic and we don't really like to talk about it. And the world will educate us and talk to us more about it than we learn about it at home or within healthy institutionalized environments, right? And so we hear on the in the rap lyrics, we hear it in the R&B songs that we listen to. We see it in movies and commercials, right? Like it, and and but we don't really understand the depths of it, right? But growing up the way that I did, growing up in the church and my 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 father being a pastor, like I, I've been able to to see a lot. And and again, I made my own mistakes, right? Like and in, in, in this conversation, what I'm talking about today, like I knew the right thing and I chose to go a different path, right? Just being ignorant, being afraid after losing, you know, my, my Virginia and not, you know, talking about it, getting guidance. But I've also just on my path. I've seen so many, I've been around and seen so many kids who come from fatherlessness, right? I've, I've, I've talked to women on their first time ever having sex, they got pregnant and they had, a, they have a child. And then the person they had a child with was not the, the man that they really want to see father their children. I've, I've, I've talked to a young lady one time some years ago that the first time she had sex, she got pregnant. And then the, the guy that she got pregnant by decided later on in life that he didn't want to be a man no more, you know? And so like, there's just so much that comes with it that I think we tend to learn later on in life that I wish like more of our young boys and young girls understood at an earlier age. But I think it starts with us. But if you look at the patterns of the world today, and when you look online and you hear people sharing their experiences of dating today and what's going on, like it's, it's such a, a normalized thing to just in our society, we're so over-sexualized and over-centralized, right? We're the only, within the animal kingdom, we're the only group that has sex just because it feels good and we want to do it all other animals do it in season right um and 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 there's some nuances there right like go do your research for yourself i'm just sharing a little bit that I, i've read and come across in, in my reading and trying to better understand sex and totality to really understand why we should wait till marriage right um but getting back just to the main point you know, um, I think a lot of us at an early age get involved with this and then we don't have a conversation with people who are intelligent enough to really be able to like talk to us about these things out of fear and out of shame. And what I see in today's culture today, we celebrate women being sluts and being hoes and, and experimenting with their body, right? Because you got the spirit of of some women wanting to be so equal to men and envying the position that men have, that even the dumb choices and decisions that men have that they think is power, they want that same access, not understanding that we are equal but different and just the damage that it does to both of our bodies, but more of the damage it does to a woman's body who is sexually promiscuous. But I'll come back to that in a second. But just dating culture today it is normalized that within at least three dates, you probably gonna sleep with the person. I, I was literally out and about at the dog park the other day and I was talking to a guy that I see at the dog park and he, we don't really talk that much, but like he, he started, you know, we just started striking up a conversation and, you know, I asked him, I was like, yo, like how's dating been for you? And, you know, and um, he's older than me, he's 53. And so he was like, you know, man, it's, you know, it is what it is, you know, it's this, it's that, and, you know, he said, um, he's just like, yeah, you know, like usually by the third day, like you sleep with them and then like, it doesn't lead anywhere and go anywhere. And I'm like, yeah, been there, done that, you know? And as we continue to talk, you know, like as a, at him being older, I was expecting him to kind of like, I ask questions to anybody, right? Let me just preface it. I say like in the real, in, in my day-to-day -day life, I talk to strangers. I talk to people. And when I talk, I ask questions. Like I really want to learn and gain something from, I can learn from anybody, right? But in this, in this instance, I thought he was going to give me something really profound. I wasn't thinking he was I'm like at 53. I'm like, you're going to you know, tell me something. So, but I ended up giving him some game. I was just like, 
you know, I said in a, in a, in a, in a polite way, I was just like, you know, man, like one thing that I've learned in dating, I was just like, man, I've learned to take intimacy off the table. I've learned to, you know, take kissing off the table and all the romance. So that way you don't get caught up in the infatuation and that I can see this person clearly. Right. So that way I don't have to dig myself deeper into an emotional pit of not being available emotionally and spiritually and suppressing my emotions and getting and gaining more baggage by just sleeping with this girl after three dates, the next girl after three dates and never healing and, and clearing my spirit of these soul ties that I've, that I've, that I've made, you know, and I didn't say all of that to him like that, but I, the main thing I said is just like, yeah, man, I've just learned to, to wait so that way I can clearly see the girl. And then like, if, if, if I don't see her as my wife, like I can just move on, you know, with my life and I haven't attached myself you know, to her. I haven't slept with her. I haven't given myself, the, given her the most precious thing that I have. Right. And, uh, but that's just normal today, right? It shouldn't be normal, but that's the norm is that like, yeah, within three dates, you know, I'll probably, you know, sleep with this person. And that's why all of us are so lost, especially that we're participating in this, in dating in that manner, like we're being sexually active with people. You don't realize that you are literally giving pieces of yourself away. And then you wonder why you can't find somebody that you feel compatible with, or that uh, you can't find a man that is emotionally available or vice versa. You can't find a woman that's emotionally available go back and look at your patterns in dating over the past year or the past 90 days. Have you been sexually active? Uh, okay. You have like, all right, like that is where you are. Right. And so Tony and I had talked about this like two videos ago about how, where, a, where, a, a like the difference in our spirits as men and women, right. And our struggles and where a man may struggle, a woman may have strengths and vice versa. Right. But anyway, like at the end of the day, like we're a reflection of each other. So whatever your habits are and however you're doing things, your sex life, your emotional life, your mental life, your physical life, all of these things show up in the pattern of the people that you get access to in the real world, you know? And so many of us are saying out of our mouth that we want one thing, but our habits and actions and patterns say something totally different, right? You're not emotionally available. You're not healthy. You're not ready to settle down with somebody, right? And even myself, you know, like I've I like I've run across more women, like because I've taken a while, like from dating. But I just say, like over the past year, like being back in the dating scene, like intentionally, right? Like I've run across a lot of women who like don't believe in waiting until marriage, right? And there's other factors to that, location and whatnot. But anyway, like just you know. I feel today that is is normalized on both sides that like that we should just have sexual expression and freedom and that we should just experience it. And I'm hearing so much talk and conversation about making sure that you're sexually compatible and have sexual chemistry with your partner. I'm like, man, if this is what you think is important or like this is not to say that it ain't important. Right. But that you think this is like top three or four on your list of meshing with somebody. Man, for me personally, yeah, we definitely not compatible, right? Like, and it's blown my mind that I've, I've gone, I've gone on dates with women who, like, we, like, things are going well, like, we're clicking on, um, you know, compatibility in other areas, all other areas of what we're talking about, and then, like, we get to 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 sex, and they're like, no, like, I need to make sure that, like, I'm compatible in that department. And for me, that's a, that's a like, man, I got to go. I got to head out. You know, like it was nice talking to you, but I got to slide because that ain't, that ain't, I'm, I'm not going that direction, you know? And, and, and real quick, like as, as a man, like you got to recognize your position as a leader, right? And being able to, to lead a woman to a no and being able to lead yourself away if a woman can't follow your no, right? Like we, we talk about like no means no. And like, you know, protecting a woman's body, but the same thing for a man, you got to understand that your body is sacred because where a man can be domineering physically, a woman can be manipulative emotionally and mentally if we're not careful. Right. But a whole nother video for another day. But yeah, like I've realized that more and more that more women, um, are on this sexual compatibility train and chemistry train. And I'm talking about women who profess to be Christians and love, love God. That's why like for me personally, I've never said this publicly, but I don't really care to hear somebody tell me that they're a Christian. Like that's cute, you know, but I pay attention to somebody's actions and, and to hear more of what they got to say, especially as a woman, because women are tend to be more emotionally intelligent and in tune with who they are and being able to articulate that. So I listen to things like that and I'm like, mm, okay. Yeah. Spiritually, we're not on the, on the same page. Right. 
I don't think I'm no better than you, but I'm I'm at a different journey than what you are on right now. And so I've just learned just to say, hey, let me walk away from this. You're not the one for me. And that's hard to do as a man, right? Um, that's why I think it's important to hold off on intimacy and dating because you can see somebody clearly, right? Like, like keeping kissing off the table, keeping, you know, hunching and just doing too much, man. Like keeping that off the table so you can clearly see somebody because, you know, you you hear the, the the phrase like with, you know, a man within three dates, a man knows whether or not you're his wife. That is so real. That is so real. That is so real. Like even not his wife, a man knows within three dates if he want to keep you around and take you serious. Right. Or if if you allow him to sleep with you, like he'll keep you around just because you're you're a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night that he can hit up, you know, and women do the same thing. Right. But that's how this lost we've gotten within society when it comes to sex. Like we got so much backwards. We want to have sex first and then no commitment afterwards. Right. Or some of us go through the experience of having sex and then we learn some consequences by bringing a life into this world. Right. Like what was you know, I, I've seen just within the, the community that I grew up in and my dad being a, a leader within the community, like it was so I didn't realize this until now as an adult, like how how the father, the fatherlessness crisis, especially within the community of people of color. Right. I remember just like after church, like so many kids would want to come over like to the house and just spend time with us, you know, just, you know, one just to play kid, just to play because we were kids, but also just to be around a healthy, you know, mother and father. And I'm not saying that my parents are perfect by any sense, but just like a healthy people, right? A healthy two parent household is what I come from. And, and just to see that I, I just growing up, I just remember seeing little boys who had all of the toys and gadgets that I did growing up, but just wanted a father. Right. And then I've seen them now as we become some of them, as we become adults, some of the same men that went through the trauma and struggle of not having their father around. I've seen them repeat that cycle and now having kids out of wedlock that they're not even involved in their lives. Right. And again, just going back to just the power of, of things, some lessons and mistakes we can recover from and some we don't. Right. Some we spend the rest of our lives. Some some it might come out um, in having a uh an std some people might turn into having a life or losing a life um some it, it, it can come from uh well actually all of it it's, it's spiritually transmitted diseases not understanding that who you lay down with you when you get back up pieces of yourself are gone i heard somebody make the comparison one time of like like having sex is like taking duct tape and putting it on the sidewalk the pureness of that duct tape, when it goes on the sidewalk, when it comes back up, it's going to have particles and different things on it. And there's no way for you to try and sit there and to, to pull those things out, right? Or to even be aware of it. It loses stickiness. But think about how how often like we slept with different people and you, you're like duct tape. You lose your stickiness after a while, right? And so with that same analogy, what, what, I've, what I've seen happen is that both men and women, especially as I've noticed just from on the opposite side, what I've noticed with women today who are extremely sexually active and experimenting and out there, I've noticed that those women become less emotional, right? The same way that how, how men, I think it's more, not say that it's healthy, but I think it's more normal for men to be able to just just from a biological perspective right like men um carry carry seeds right so men can go out and just procreate every single day all day can just keep going right versus when a woman gets pregnant um she has to carry that child for nine months right and so saying that to say that i think that in a healthy way there's a certain part of a man that is not as emotionally attached to sex as women are right and so that's where you hear some men say man like this is just sex for me right but it still is deeper than that right but just on that level i've seen women try and say the same thing and what i realize is that the the more sexually active a woman becomes and especially when you're just experimenting and just saying i'm just i'm you have that mindset that like i can do what a man does we got the same level of freedom yeah, it's harmful to both of us, but it's harmful to a woman in a different way than it is a man. Like it's both, they're both harmful, both be, just being a hoe, being sexually active, experimenting sexually is damaging to both sides. But I think for women, what I've noticed as a man is just like how unemotionally available women are and just how, um, who are sexually active a lot and, um, how masculine they become. Right. But if you think about it, like 
you keep laying down with all these different men, you're taking on their spirit and the same thing. And not just one man consistently, but especially multiple different men consistently, you're taking on all of their spirit. And then like, we're just so out of line. We're so out of whack that the design of what sex really is loses what the, the loses that bond. We lose that bonding mechanism, right? That, that it's a marriage factor. I understand now why sex is meant for marriage because in both of our bodies, whenever we lay down together, especially in love and in Christ, right? It is a connection piece there when you feel safe and secure with this man or with this woman and oxytocin is released, is released, you know, in the brain, right? And, and that's why I think it's normal for women when women give their body that they become very emotional, right? And I've been there and made that dumb mistake, like, you know, hearing a woman saying that's just sex, that I ain't going to be attached and like fall for that and do that. And then all of a sudden they're very emotional. And then we shame women for being emotional after sex. That is normal, right? But because we don't know our own bodies, we don't know the bodies and the minds of, of the opposite sex to be able to appreciate that about a woman and appreciate certain things about a man and our differences, right? And so what I've seen today is that women have gotten so hard, has gotten have gotten so hard and masculine, and and also you know another another piece today that you know I, I don't want to speak on fully because I'm not a I'm not a woman, but just like the influx of like birth control and like how that's chemically altering you know women today too. You know, just real quick to to touch on that, like. I can, I can be around and it's crazy to say, but I was having a conversation, you know, um, with, with the homie about this, but I was like, man, like I can tell if when, when a woman's on birth control, like through her mannerisms and how she acts, like I can tell, right? Like, I don't know how I can tell, but I can just feel it. Just my discernment, just spiritual, especially the more that I abstain from sex, just my discernment and being able to pick up on things is, is at a very high level, but that ain't, I, ain't, I don't want to get off into that, you know, but back to what I was saying is that like we we shame women and this is the, the partly the fault of men right uh, and just both sides like I said just like for the for the most of a, for the most part most of our genesis like when we have lost our virginity at an early age and it didn't end in marriage like that's trauma right we don't look at it that way we just think we're experimenting but that is trauma like you did not there was nothing fruitful that you got from this experience right especially intentionally right like how many of us um, are intentional when we have sex. Like most of us are just chasing a nut, chasing pleasure, chasing an orgasm, right? We're in it, and it comes from a selfish place. So think about two people coming together in lust and they, they both, especially in the guise of, let's just say sexual compatibility, when there is no love there and there's no commitment in the way that God has designed it. And I'm talking about from my own experience, right? That when you lay down with this woman, when you lay down this man, y'all are more focused on pleasing yourself than you are the other other person. And that's how you know there's not love there because you're so focused on I'm trying to get mine. I'm trying to get get my orgasm and then go. Right. And then when we look at the aftermath of after we do this, do I feel comfortable with this woman to lay in bed and talk with her in the way that I believe God designed it to be right. I think God designed it for a woman to submit her body unto a man and then for a man to submit his emotions unto a woman. Right. And like, it's that, it's that re reciprocal process of them pouring into each other versus when we're not doing it God's way, we're just taken from one another. We're just going to get, I'm just going, going to get mine, right? And 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 not realizing that we're damaging ourselves and losing ourselves. And both both sides, both men and women are so emotionally unavailable and lost today because of our our, our sex life and our patterns, especially if we haven't taken the time to take a break from the dating market and to abstain from sex, to one, see ourselves clearly and to heal from the wounds and the baggage that we have entertained and gotten ourselves involved with by having a reckless sex life, just experimenting, just getting a feel for it, trying to see if we, if I have sexual combat compatibility and chemistry, You've been doing more work and effort in your physical life, and you have been doing no work emotionally and mentally to understand who you are and to really even understand yourself physically, right? How many people out here having, having sex and don't even know their blood type? You don't even know your body. But you out here laying down with somebody else and and you know how you like it and you know what position is your favorite this and that. Man, we are so ignorant and so backwards, man. And again, been there, done that. Like, but just when I look at it from a different perspective now, I'm like, man, I don't have no regrets in my life. But if I could go back in time, man, 
knowing what I know now and understanding how sacred our bodies are and just the, the bonding mechanism, just all the different things that how spiritual this, this exchange is, man, I would hold on to my virginity, man. I, I really would. And I wish, especially as men, like I'm hoping that just I'm, I'm trying to be an example and have these conversations more publicly because as men, we don't talk about this enough. We don't talk about our emotions, but we just suffer in silence or we celebrate ignorance, right? Like we pass on like the whole, like, man, you, you get, man, you getting some, you getting laid, like, all right, boy, I see you, you know, like we start that at an early age. And if we get older, we, yeah, we get into our fifties and sixties and we still got the same mindset because we've never matured. We, we've never educated ourselves on what sex is, right? We've just done it and just only learned through trial and error and not seen it through a different lens, you know, but I really think it's hurting our society. It's hurting our youth. You know, especially with the influx of like dirty movies online and how easy that is, man, it's a heavy problem too. A lot of people are stuck and addicted to masturbating, right? Like, man, that's a that's a heavy thing. Like, how many we don't got to talk about it this video, but how many women out there, you know, you know, struggle with with that rose and and the mother vibrating mechanisms that they keep next to their bed. Like it's a, it's, it's a lot, it's warfare going on, man. And just now looking at myself and just having accountability, that's what I want to touch on real quick. I don't want to make this video too long, but like the reason this conversation is awkward because for men, for the most part in our society, when we talk about sex, we talk about in a manner of the ego, over-sexualizing women, making them the object to attain and get to conquer and then to move on to the next one. Right. But, you know, how how often do we celebrate commitment? How often do we celebrate love? How often do we celebrate uh, a man's virginity? We don't, especially amongst men, right? So my my struggle on my on my journey of abstinence before was trying to do it all by myself, not having accountability around me, right? Because I was nervous to talk about it, right? It's hard to talk about about sex one, one a man to a woman. But then it's hard to talk about it man to man, especially like trying to talk to like an elder about it. Like I used to be so nervous to talk about sex, like to my dad. Now I'm at a different place where I'll talk about it. But man, growing up and just being in my 20s, just making a lot of mistakes, you know, like it was uncomfortable and just no accountability. But now like I have accountability in my life and I talk about it more often because I'm really serious about the journey. That's why I'm talking about it more publicly. Um, and just the, the, the calls that I have weekly with like, with like some of my, some of my homeboys, you know, we're holding each other accountable and I'm at a phase in my life now because as men it's hard trying to find other healthy men that are on the same journey as you spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. It's easy for me to go out and to find a man that's, that's, um, enticed and motivated to make more money. Cool. I'm with you. Let's get this bag together. It's easy to go out and find a man that want to get his body together and get bigger and get his muscles right and get hard in the gym cool. I'm with that. Let's go to the gym. But when it comes to sp things of the spirit and advancing your spirit and saying, man, I want to wait till marriage. Be like, man, that's lame, man, boy, man, that's weird. Or that's like, whatever. And I used to feel self-conscious about it. And that's where I, that's what, what caused me to fall. I would like try and go back and be amongst the masses or try and make friends where I was out with different guys and like hanging out and start taking back on their patterns and spirits. As I said earlier, like that's why it's important for us as men to know ourselves and be able to lead ourselves and, and forget the crowd. That's why we really got to be stay grounded in God. Like that is the key is really staying grounded in your relationship with Christ. And for me personally, that when I'm, when I'm focused on God and putting God first, that's when I'm strongest. Right. But then also having brothers around me that keep me encouraged on this journey as I keep them encouraged. Like I don't hang around men that I call a friend. I don't hang around men that are, are fornicating. Right. Um, there's acquaintances that I run across in my life through business and through other avenues within my life. Cause I tend to attract just a lot of people my way, but people that are close to me that are in my inner circle that I talk to on a regular basis. And I exchange time, effort, and energy with, we got to be on the same page. Right. And even if, even if you're not there, right. If, if I share with you, Hey, this is where I'm at. Like as a leader and as a man, this is the journey that I'm, 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 I'm moving in. So I'm expecting you, if you're going to be around me and you say you want the same thing that, that I do, this is the path that I'm following. And if you're not trying to follow this path, you got to get out of my life. Right. But say all that to say, like, I got two brothers that I talk to weekly that are entrepreneurs and we, we, we share like spirit, mind and body goals of where we're trying to get to. And it's so, it's so beautiful now because like, we just, 
I see how much more emotionally aware we are, how much, um, how deeper we are spiritually in our walk with God as we're on this journey of abstinence together, right? Where, where two or more come together and they agree there's power, there's strength. And man, I'm just seeing the changes and the shifts in their lives. But it started with me making a decision. You know, I called one of my homeboys, you know, after the last time um, I had sex and I was like, bro, I can't, I can't do this no more. I was like, bro, it's not me no more. I was like, man, I done, I done, done this way too many times, man. And it always ends at the same outcome. How many women do I got to sleep with and think that the outcome is going to be different, that I'm going to find my wife, like in, in this pattern, like of just being unintentional. Right. I was like, man, no, my purpose is calling me and I got to stay focused and grounded in my purpose. And I'm like, bro, I need you to hold me accountable. And at this, and, and at this time, like I wasn't even asking him. I, I'm like, bro, for me, like I just need somebody else that I can talk to that can that can hold me accountable to my goals. I'm like, bro, you can hold me accountable to what I say I want to do in business and financially and about going to the gym and like waking up early. But bro, I need you to hold me accountable about my sex. Like, this is what I need to do and what I'm trying to do. And I just, I just need encouragement. And now, you know, just I've seen our journey in both of our lives, like as we've been committed to this together. And now I'm seeing other men that God is bringing into my life to be able to talk to and sharpen with and coach. And I'm seeing a shift, you know? And so same to all of you that are, that are out there, you know, watching this, like, you know, I'm coming with compassion and love and saying this, that, that your, your, your body is valuable. You are valuable. Don't, don't just keep giving it up to people. You know, my goal is to get to marriage. My goal is to be abstinent until marriage. And I know some people, you know, say like they want to wait until they're getting in a committed relationship. Just in general, I just want to encourage you just to wait. If you've never waited before, if you've never had a journey where you, you or a time in your life where you stopped having sex or you didn't masturbate or you didn't know that side of yourself, I want to encourage you to pause and just take 90 days, 90 days and pay attention to your body. And if you can't do 90 days, do 30 days, 30 days, no masturbation, no sex, and just really pay attention to yourself, pay attention to your mental clarity, pay attention to your spirit, pay attention to your connection with God, pay attention to your awareness with, with your job and your work and the relationships and the people around you. Just pay attention and really see how, how valuable your body is outside of the confines of just pleasure. Your body is meant for purpose. Your body is meant to be fruitful and multiply. How much of a liability have you been in other people's lives where you added no value to them? There's no child that came out of this. There's no commitment that came out of this. There's no love, right? Like how often do we got to keep repeating the same cycles before we learn our mistake? Or does it have to end with a, a heavier pain, right? We can shift the culture. We can shift the world. You change the world by changing yourself and becoming your best self. Again, I'm coming here today to fall on my sword, to talk, to have this awkward conversation by myself with you all publicly, to hold myself accountable, but also just to just to open up the conversation, just you know, with with with, with people, just to think different. I just want to encourage you all to critically think, to think, to use your brain, to say, you know what, yeah, I keep doing the same thing, I keep getting the same results but I want a different outcome. You got to change yourself. You got to change your actions. Close your legs. Women, I promise you, you can shift the culture if you close your legs. So what? That man don't want to wait till marriage. Let him go. So what? That woman, for the fellas out there that's on the absence journey, so what? That woman don't want to wait. Let her go. The one that God has for you out there will not pass you by. I promise you. You're going to have some tests along the way, right? But you have the strength to overcome. Resist the devil and he shall flee. You know, as soon as you verbalize and you put into action that you're trying to do something, the devil is listening and he's going to try and tempt you with that thing. Don't fall for it no more. I've fallen for it many a times, just taking a whole whole gang of, of stupid pills, right? And when I know, I know better, right? But you got to know why. It's not enough to just say that. I just like, because... Uh, and I mean this on a spiritual and mental level, right? It's not enough just to say like, I just want to wait until marriage to have sex because it's a, it's, I don't want to sin. It's got to be bigger than sin. You got to attach it to your purpose. You got to understand that everything about you, everything that you do, everything that you consume and everything that you output, you got to understand that you are an asset, right? And 
all of your energy, all of your nutrients, everything about your spiritual makeup, everything about you is uniquely you and that you can't just be wasting that seed, right? Like understanding that your your sperm and, and your semen is, is seeds and how often have you given that to the toilet or to the shower drain or to that sock, right? And to the ladies, how often have you just wasted your fluid and your energy and your power out of the, out of the sake of pleasure? How often have you had one night stands? How often have you slept with somebody and then all of a sudden you want to get up and leave, right? How many, how many guys have you slept with that if you called and needed to come and change your tire in the middle of the night wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't come, right? But if you call and say, hey, come over tonight for some cheeks, we'll be there in a heartbeat. All right. Think about these things. I'm just, I'm just, again, take me with a grain of salt. I'm just trying to get y'all to think and think differently. Right. Like how high up on your list does sexual chemistry and compatibility really have to be? Is it number one? Are you going to, are you, are you willing to throw away somebody be, over that? And I think just that whole conversation, man, just when we're just, that, that's just an example of somebody that's just not spiritually grounded to me from my perspective, you know, um, when I, when, as a man, especially as a man and I'm, and I'm stepping to the plate as a leader and as a, a priest, as a provider, as a protector, and you don't want to wait as a woman, it's no judgment, but the, the way I discern that as a man is that this is a woman that is not good for my soul, right? If you can be good for my body and good for my pleasure, but not good for my soul, like that's, that's where you have the Jezebels of this world. That's where you have the Delilahs of this world. When you look at Proverbs 31, before you see the Proverbs 31 woman, you hear King Lemuel talk about um, the ode that his mother would tell him as a kid. Like she would, she, she said, you know, don't waste your, your energy on women, right? Don't, don't waste your energy on getting drunk. Basically saying don't waste your energy on, on chasing and pursuing pleasure. Same thing with Samson. Like if we look at the history of a lot of great men and great leaders, their biggest downfall was, was what's between their legs, not being able to, to, to subdue that part of themselves. That dog has conquered them, right? How many are great men have, have fallen to that? Even King David. I love, I love the intro to King David's life. He was following God, doing the right thing. But as he, as he went up and God blessed him, he took a stupid pill too, you know, and, and even myself, right? Again, that, that's why I'm doing this. And I just feel this, like this purpose calling me in this phase of my life and why I'm being so transparent about these things. Cause it's also accountability for me as well, you know, but something I've been thinking about and I'm praying on and just, you know, I, you know, you guys, you know, leave it in the con in, in the comments if, if, if something you're interested in, but I've been thinking about, you know, starting a, um, starting a community, you know, for those of you that are subscribed to my channel and, and, you know, we're, we're like-minded in this way. And um, you, you, you want to pursue the three Bs. You want to be your best in your brain, your brand, and your body. You want to be your best in spirit, mind, and body. You want that accountability to, to continue to be absent. You want that accountability to uh, go to the gym and to eat right, take care of your body. And you want to talk to like-minded people around the country, around the world that's on the same journey as you. I see the need for community and accountability. Again, as I shared through my own experience, like as a man, I know it's been hard trying to find like-minded men that I can associate with and not be so isolated on my journey that can encourage me and I can talk to and get wisdom and knowledge from. And the same thing, you know, for the, for, for the ladies, but I understand that for, for some of us, we're all in different parts of the world and we don't maybe have that access. And so the internet is maybe, you know, the tool that we have to go to, to, to get that community. So it's something I've been thinking about doing. If that's something that you're interested in, please, you know, leave something in the comments about it. You know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm praying on it, but you know, I, I want to see more people, be above the average. I want to see more people be rare. I want to see more people being lights, role models, and examples in this world and going against the grain. You know, like I want to see more people like understanding and respecting their body and choosing, you know, their journey of abstinence and being committed to it and having people around the world that, you know, virtually can help them stay accountable and committed to this journey in this wall, you know? So if you made it this far, I really appreciate you. This is a long video. I appreciate it if you made it to the end. If this video helped you in any manner, you know, I ask that you please like it, please share it with somebody that you think needs to hear this message. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe, turn on the notifications. And so that way you can be notified the next time I put another video out. Um, focusing on trying to put out more quality than quantity, trying to take more time and work on upgrading my setup. So I appreciate all of you for being patient with me. If you haven't, please watch the last episode of Louder Than Words, where Tony and I talk about abstinence. We talk about, you know, our, our journey and 
I think it's just, you know, we, we got to talk more about sex and, and stop making it some taboo to topic because the the not talking about the input, we have to struggle with the outputs. I'm, I'm tired of seeing so many, and this is no, I, don't, I mean this in a respectful way, but I'm tired of seeing so many broken and fatherless households, right? Uh, you know, I see the damage that it does. I see so many kids that crave to have their uh, father around. I grew up with boys and men around that. And I didn't realize how rare and blessed I was to, you know, the simple thing is having a father around, right? We focus so much in, in thinking that the solution to our, our life and our problems in our communities is, is money and financial gain, man. It's fathers having men around, you know, husbandry and, 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 and being, you know, healthy mothers and healthy two-parent households. And nothing is ever going to be perfect in this world. But man, just seeing people work together is so valuable and so important. You know, like I want to see some of these cycles broken and like I want to use my platform and my purpose to be a part of that. Again, like I'm talking from a, a, a place of experience of like, man, I lost my virginity at an early age. And like if I could go back, all of the, the women that I've hurt, hurting myself, the baggage that I that I, I got myself attached to. Just, just the liability, just all the different things that come with it, man. You know, like there's so much more I could talk about and I'll talk about later. I'll, I'll, I'll keep talking about this topic more regularly, but I just want to drop on here today and just share this awkward conversation with y'all. I hope y'all got something from it. But anyways, I'll be back soon, guys. Peace.